you so much for joining me. I'm going to go straight into the video today. Obviously, this is a faith video. And if I'm being completely honest, it's a video I actually did not want to make. But I have to be obedient to the Holy Spirit because I don't want no smoke. Okay, so let's dive right in. And I, before I even started this video, I had to pray for the Holy Spirit to give me utterance because I don't want to say anything that is coming from my own intelligence or wisdom. This has to all be the Holy Spirit. So, quick backstory. In April, you guys know that I did it. I went on a trip to New Jersey and I had visited a particular township in New Jersey that I actually fell in love with. And I was completely determined to move over there but I knew that in order for me to just pick up my life and move from Texas I needed to seek God to find out if that was in um, according to if that was in accordance to his plan so I decided that I would go on a fast I knew that a three-day fast wasn't gonna cut it a seven-day fast wasn't gonna cut it I needed to go on a 40-day fast mind you that would be the very first time I'm ever embarking on a 40-day fast and let me tell you, it was not the easiest thing to do, but I knew that for what I was seeking the Lord for, I needed to go on that fast. So the, 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 the aim of the fast really was to see if God would permit me to make this move to New Jersey. And so I embarked on this fast when I came back in, at the end of April. I think I decided to go on the fast in June. So... I started the fast uh, first couple of days you know God spoke and I felt like yeah this is definitely in accordance to his will he wants me to move he had said telling me you know different things about what I would be doing out there you know um, weeks into the fast I didn't hear God anymore but I continued and then towards the tail end of the fast you know God spoke again and in that fast he said New Jersey was not for right now so I knew that my wanting to move was not in accordance to his plan. He said a bunch of other things in that fast and then, you know, the fast ended. I noticed a couple of things happening right after the fast, you know, you know, I was getting some favors here and there and I recognized that this was, you know, God's giftings to me. Now in August, fast forward to August of this year, I didn't even realize until a few days ago that God was had started to really speak to me probably more than he ever has in the month of August and he started to download a lot of stuff and we'll get into all of it you know as the course as we continue in you know making videos on the channel one of the very first things he had said to me was in early August I believe the seventh or the, the second I'm sorry and I will put an image somewhere on the screen so you would see. And he had led me to the book of Amos, which is the, one of the books of the minor prophets, the 12 minor prophets. And in that book, it was talking about that, that the whole 12 books of the 12 prophets was really about the judgment of God and the restoration of his people on, in the earth. Now, when he started talking to me, I felt like at first I didn't understand obviously what he was saying and I've, I've been taught that you know when God starts speaking to you he doesn't give you all of the information all at once he'll give you a little bit and then the idea is for you to you know go to your secret place sit there dive in ask God to explain the Holy Spirit to expound on what he's saying to you to give you you know um, understanding and that is exactly what I did and so uh, he did now we all know what's happening in Israel today and I want to be very to make sure that I, I'm very careful with what I say because I know that tensions are high and this is a very very sensitive subject and I do not want to be come off as insensitive by any means so when the Lord led me to Amos I had written down you know like all the nations that he was mentioning in that book and as you can see you know Israel was in there Gaza was in there the Middle East Jordan all of these places and you can see Palestine in the images I'm showing you and it was on the second and this was like on the on the second day of the 
fast. You know, I also do a fast every month for the first three or seven days of every month. And I was going on a fast on in this month, so the second day, I believe. And in, on that day, I think I was following um, Prophetess Tiffany Montgomery's fast. And the second day is usually about mercy. And so as I was reading, it just seemed like the judgment of God was coming upon the earth. And it was going to come upon several different nations. And I guess at the time when he was listing these nations to me, what he meant, I guess what he was trying to say, because obviously I still didn't fully understand, but the thing that I knew for a fact was that God's judgment was coming. Now I've heard, a lot, I've seen a lot of content on YouTube with faith creators and pastors and that and all that stuff making videos about what's going on in Israel and what I've heard I tried not to watch too many especially and you know just other commentary I try not to watch too much of it because I don't want to have anybody's you know opinions about what's going on to influence me or what the Holy Spirit is saying to me but I've seen a few and the consensus is that this is the kingdom of darkness, you know, just wrecking havoc. It like the gates of hell have swung open and all of the demons, witches, warlocks, all of them have come out in full force to wreak havoc upon the earth. Now, that's true to a certain degree. And I don't want to, again, offend anybody, especially fellow Christians or believers, but if you read the book, The Twelve Prophets, that's Joel, Amos, Hosea, Micah, Malachi, Zechariah, Habakkuk, those books, all those books are talking about God's judgment coming upon the nations of the earth. Israel, specifically Judah, Jerusalem, because of the wickedness, sin, the idolatry, that has become so prevalent in these nations and in essence he has allowed given permission I, I should use that word given permission to the enemy to do what he's doing right now we know and we always say that all the time that the Lord is a jealous God and he's not playing about that and so when we allow, and I say by saying we, I mean the body of Christ, the church, when we allow other pagan practices to exist alongside belief in God, the church, we as the watchmen, because that's who we are as the body of Christ, we are the spiritual watchmen and women in any nation. So wherever there's a church planted, where there, wherever there are Christians, it is our responsibility to ensure that the gospel of Jesus goes forth in the land. And then the shepherds, that's the pastors, the prophets, the prophetesses, all those people who have been given the anointing and put in positions of authority over you know, certain areas, nations, you know, all of that stuff, it is their responsibility to ensure that pagan practices and sin, idolatry in general, is not given permission to exist side by side with the church. And because as the body we have failed in that department, we have kindled the wrath of God. I will leave scriptures in the book of Amos to show you exactly, you know, like this, this is where the spirit of God led me the first time in Amos. And then further along, you know, the line, he told me to read all of the 12 prophets, all of those books, which I did. And it's all about God's judgment and then restoration. And the reason why the judgment is coming is so he can purge. It's like, that's what it, this is. It is a real life Church happening in the world. There is so much wickedness, so much sin, so much idolatry that is running rampant today that if not that God had promised that he would not destroy the world anymore, we should have been long 
ago wiped out. And because as the body we have allowed a lot of this wickedness and idolatry to exist and to happen, we have stayed tolerant, we have been quiet, we've just been standing idly by, you know, we have, we're more concerned about how we look to culture and the world because we're afraid of getting canceled. We don't want to say the wrong things to offend people. We don't want to lose followers, subscribers. We don't want to lose con members of ch our church and all that stuff. We care more about that stuff than what God says is worth. We have allowed and become tolerant of the things that God has specifically said in his word are detestable things before him. Now, I want to read a bunch of scripture and it's going to be a lot of scripture just to give you scriptural backing to what I'm saying. Okay. And I have my Bible here. And the first scripture we're going to read is in Malachi 3 and I will read from verse 8. And it said, But as for me, I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord. I am filled with justice and strength to boldly declare Israel's sin and rebellion. Listen to me, you leaders of Israel. Israel, you hate justice and twist all that is right. So, as you can see, this um, verse is saying, he saw the, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to Amos, and it says, He's filled with justice and strength to boldly declare Israel's sin and rebellion. I don't know what has been happening in Israel before this war started, but in other words, there's been a lot of rebellion and sin. Israel has poised itself because Israel is like the, cho the, the chosen people of God. We know all that from scripture. It's like there's a spirit of rebellion and just this pride that has come upon that nation to where we're God's people, we're God's chosen people. Therefore, you know, we're good in a sense. I hope that makes sense. Then I'll read Micah 5. And I'll read from verse 7. 7 to 15. And it's titled, The Remnant Purified. Then the remnant left in Israel will take their place among the nations. They will be like dew sent by the Lord or like rain fit falling on the grass, which no one can hold back and no one can restrain. The remnant left in Israel will take their place among the nations. They will be like a lion among the animals of the forest, like a strong young lion among flocks of sheep and goats, pouncing and tearing as they go with no rescuer in sight. The people of Israel will stand to their foes, and all their enemies will be wiped out. In that day, says the Lord, I will slaughter your horses and destroy your chariots. I will tear down your walls and demolish your defenses. I will put an end to all witchcraft, and there will be no more fortune tellers. Verse 13, I will destroy all your idols and sacred pillars, so you will never again worship the work of your own hands. So, from this judgment that is happening, a remnant is going to rise, a remnant of new prophets, new spokespeople, as it were, for God, that will come with boldness, with strength, speaking and representing God in the way that our predecessors have been failing to do. And it is through these new crop of believers that the nation of Israel will again be purified because God is going to rebuild Israel and will rebuild it in the way that it should have been from the very beginning. We're going to read also um, Zephaniah 1, all of it, but I'll let's start with um, Zechariah 13 and I will read from verse 7. Verse 7 says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, the man who is my partner, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Strike down the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered, and I will turn against the lambs. Two-thirds of the people in the land will be cut off and die, says the Lord, but one-third will be left in the land. I will bring that group through the fire and make them pure. I will refine them like silver and purify them like gold. 
they will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, these are my people, and they will say, the Lord is our God. So that again is just um, giving spiritual context to the fact that the ones who have been called to be shepherds to lead God's people in the way and the truth of the Lord have failed. So they're going to be cut off and a near remnant is going to rise and, you know, just do what it is that they were supposed to have been doing. Okay. So now let's go to, um, Zephaniah. Right. Zephaniah, or let's let's do. I'll I'll just leave the scripture in Zephaniah for you guys to read. It. It's all, but let me quickly. Maybe we'll come back to that. But let's go to um, Hosea. I want to read Hosea thirteen, and I'm going to read all of it. And it's titled "The Lord's Anger Against Israel." When the tribe of Ephraim spoke, the people shook with fear, for that tribe was important in Israel. But the people of Ephraim sinned by worshiping Baal, and thus sealed their destruction. Now they continue to sin by making silver idols, images shaped skillfully with human hands. Sacrifice to these, they cry, and kiss the calf idols. Therefore they will disappear like the morning mist, like dew in the morning sun, like chaff blown by the wind, like smoke from a chimney. I have been the Lord your God ever since I brought you out of Egypt. You must acknowledge no God but me, for there is no other Savior. I took care of you in the wilderness, in that dry and thirsty land. But when you had eaten and were satisfied, you became proud and forgot me. So now I will attack you like a lion, like a leper that lurks along the road, like a bear whose cubs have been taken away. I will tear out your heart. Mm. I will devour you like a hungry lioness and mangle you like a wild animal. You're about to be destroyed, O Israel. Yes, by me, your only helper. Now, where is your king? Let him save you. Where are all the leaders of that land, the king and the officials you demanded of me? In my anger, I gave you kings, and in my fury, I took them away. Ephraim's guilt has been collected and his sin has been stored up for punishment. Pain has come to the people like pain of childbirth, but they are like a child who resists being born. The moment of birth has arrived, but they stay in the womb. Should I ransom them from the grave? Should I redeem them from death? O death, bring on your terrors. O grave, bring on your plagues, for I will not take pity on them. Ephraim was not was the most fruitful of all its brothers, but the east wind, a blast from the Lord, will arise in the desert. All their flowing springs will run dry, and all their wells will disappear. Every precious thing they own will be plundered and carried away. The people of Samaria must bear the consequences of their guilt because they rebelled against their God. They will be killed by an invading army, their little ones dashed to death against the ground, their pregnant women ripped open by swords. If you know what's happening in Israel, then you know that this is like the word of God manifesting. I hope I'm saying that right. But it, I'll just quickly read from chapter 14, verse 1 to 2. And it says, healing for the repentant. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for your sins have brought you down. Bring your confessions and return to the Lord. Say to him, forgive all our sins and graciously receive us so that we may offer you praises. That is in Hosea 13, 14. So the long and short is that Israel needs to, not just Israel, nations of the world we all need to repent and go back to the lord now to cap this off this has even gone longer than i wanted it to go when the lord was sharing all this to me i had to ask what is my role what do you want me to do first of all i knew i was asked or well, i was instructed to share and then the second thing was to intercede and as believers who are all of us who are watching this play out and happen we have to intercede 
for two things. The first one that the Spirit of the Lord shared with me is that we need to intercede for all those who are going to be left behind. In other words, the remnant, those people who are not going to have the finances or the capability to rebuild themselves. So we need to intercede that people from wherever, far and wide, all the other nations of the earth who have the financial capacity to help will be stirred to come in and help these people resettle and rebuild. So that's the first intercession that we need to make. The second intercession that the Holy Spirit laid on my heart was that we need to intercede for mercy. Now we can pray that, you know, the Lord will not allow this to go on. The truth is that it's going to happen. Okay? It's, it is what it is. But the intercession is that the Lord will shorten the time of this judgment so that it does not go on and on and on for a long time. The, the news we're hearing coming out from Israel about the devastation that's going on is enough to break anybody's heart. Children being slaughtered like animals, people being killed, like it's crazy. Like I said, I've been very careful not to listen to what's happening over there, but I was in a car and I was listening to a radio broadcast and they were interviewing uh, a father who's in Israel, I think he's American. And he was talking about how his daughter had gone to spend the night at her friend's home the night before the attacks happened. And usually she doesn't do that, but on this particular night she had chosen to go. And then next thing you know, you know they're attacking Israel and unfortunately he was worried obviously about his child and all this stuff and by the time the police or the Israeli soldiers came you know and found you know to help and all of that you know it, it, it was obviously discovered that his daughter had been killed and when they asked him about that his response was a strange one but when he explained further it made sense because it was like he would rather his child die than be captured by the invaders and taking over to wherever as a prisoner and God knows what would have happened to his daughter like and he, he also said what world are we living in where as a father you would say it's better that your child were dead as opposed to being captured alive by the enemy so Clearly everything that's happening is crazy and I know it's going to challenge a lot of believers theology and just outlook on Who God is and yes, God is loving God is kind God is merciful God is all of those things but he's also a judge and Again, he's a jealous God and he does not he will not share his glory with anyone. So when there is um idolatry and wickedness and immorality and sin and everything just ravaging the land so much so that even the ones who are the chosen the call the church the body of christ are just we're we're almost like you, you can't find us in all of this it's like we blended in we've allowed all this to happen it's like we we are we want to be like the world then a judgment has to come, a purification, a purge, which is what is, what is happening. And it didn't start with Israel. We saw it in Ukraine. We saw it in um, Hawaii, in Maui with the fires. And like I said, like I said, God downloaded a lot into my spirit in the month of August. And as time goes on, we'll get into all of it. But that is just all I wanted to share today. We have to intercede that, you know, the Lord will shorten the length of his judgment upon the nation because if he does not i'm not sure that any of us matter of fact none of us will be able to um bear the wrath of god and like i said this is not a video that i wanted to make i wanted to just be quiet stay out of it and just make my lifestyle videos not bother anybody but i guess i'm part of the remnants and the new prophets that he's anointing 
to be his spokespeople and just let people know what's coming because there's more coming. And if we do not stand in the gap and intercede for the nations as the body of Christ, you know, the kingdom of darkness is just going to continue to have the permission to do what they're doing. Okay? So thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. If you're feeling so inclined, like I said, this is not the video I wanted to be making, but I don't want any smoke from my creator, so I had to do it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you guys in my next video very soon.